All right, hello guys. Today we're talking about Tropical Depression 3, which is just developed off the coast of Florida. We're going to be talking about that as it could possibly head up the East Coast. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content like this one. Also, winter forecasts, things like that. I have that video out. You could go check that out as well after this video. Now we're going to get right into things. We're looking at satellite imagery here, and you can see it's right off the East Coast of Florida. And it looks pretty well developed at this point. It looked like just some thunderstorms a few hours ago, but it's starting to get a little bit more organized here at this point it's north of the bahamas north of freeport north of nassau uh just to the north actually and it's gonna rapidly head north we're gonna get right into that in just a second so stay tuned now we're looking at your spaghetti models and the track looks to take this just offshore of north carolina some even having it interact with the outer banks in the next 24 hours uh, even Moorhead City, possibly, even Beaufort, possibly. So you're going to need to pay very close attention to that. Also, Southeast Virginia, that's where I'm from. You could also feel some effects from this one. And also, some models taking it up into New England. So a lot of things are possible as of right now. And we're going to keep you updated on everything that's possible, obviously, just like we always do. Now, something I wanted to talk about is the sea surface temperatures right now. And you can see along the East Coast, we have generally all above average sea surface temperatures. And this is going to lead to more uh, possibility for development with storms this season. Not just this storm, but in the future too. We are going to have better conditions for development of tropical activity. Pretty much all along that East Coast, you can see we have one degree above average Celsius, which is kind of a big deal actually. Now, it might not seem like it, but this could make a world's difference in tropical development. Now, we're also going to look at your tropical in intensity index by Spectrum News. I always look at this, and it seems to be pretty accurate. You can see we have highly favorable conditions all around the coast uh, of the, the East Coast, and as well as in the Gulf of Mexico, and down through Cuba, Haiti, into Puerto Rico, all those areas all have highly favorable conditions for tropical activity. So things are really starting to heat up very rapidly. So we're going to be having a lot of tropical activity over the next month, obviously, and then heading into September even. We're going to be having lots of tropical activity, and I'm obviously going to keep giving you guys lots of videos for all of the storms that develop this season. Now, looking at your intensity guidance, you can see we are expected, actually, looking at this, to at least become a weak tropical storm. There's about... Let's see. It looks like there's about three or four models that have it never developing into a tropical storm, but there's five that have it developing into a tropical storm, and there's two that have it briefly. So I think that there's a safe bet that most likely it will become a tropical to tropical storm. I think probably about a 60 to 70 percent chance at this point. Now, here's Noah's outlook for this one. You can see where it's located. And this was at 5 a.m. this morning. And you can see by 2 p.m. it's already going to be pretty far north up there. It's going to be right off the coast, I would say, of Daytona. And by 2 a.m. tonight, it will be offshore of Moorhead City. So this is going to rapidly start heading up the coast as soon as it starts to interact with the cold front that's coming through. If you're along the east coast, you know about this because you're going to feel it today. Thunderstorms are going to roll through and that cold front's going to interact with this and it's going to be able to ride right up that cold front. So it's going to start really accelerating uh, soon, pretty soon right now. It's kind of stationary right now, but it will start accelerating very quickly. Now, here is kind of your percent chance for development here and you can see we have pretty good chance of some development once it heads north obviously like I said it's looking like it's going to become a tropical storm now I wanted to mention that again I was talking about how favorable conditions are right now we have four different areas of pos possible tropical development here we have one in the gulf that's going to be happening over the next 48 hours or after the next 48 hours better yet and that's going to head Basically, from the United States in Texas, it's going to head into the Gulf and then possibly develop into a depression or tropical storm or subtropical storm. The, the National Weather Service hasn't clarified whether they think it will be a subtropical storm or tropical storm at this point, but it looks like it's going to head into the Gulf, and we don't really know what it's going to do from that point on. The Gulf is highly favorable, so it can really develop once it heads into the Gulf. Now, we also have a, a little thing down there in the kind of the southern... Gulf. I don't know if that's necessarily the Gulf, but it's 
it's kind of near South America down there, and you can see that we do have a little bit of chance of development. I don't think that'll turn into much, but right there offshore of Africa, you can see we have a pretty good percent chance of tropical development, and that's right in that main development region. So that's going to be maybe possibly our first tropical development within the neck the main development region, which is going to be interesting to see happen. Now we're going to look at some model guidance on where the NAM likes to take this storm and also look at rainfall and wind conditions to be expected here for the East Coast. But first off, we're looking at the 500 millibar geopotential height cyclonic vorticity. Now this is a good tool for seeing some spin in the atmosphere as well as the location of a storm when there's not really a large area of low pressure. It doesn't really pick up on that, but we can see the vorticity here. So you can see it's kind of located, again, right there off of central Florida off the east coast. So we're going to go ahead and move on to 12 hours from now, which is going to be about, let's see. So it's going to be about this evening because this was the 6Z run. So this is going to be about 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. time frame. And you can see that it's about offshore of Daytona at this point. You can see a lot of those reds, that main little area of red there offshore of Florida in the east the the Atlantic Ocean is going to be our main tropical storm here and you can see it's moved north this is 24 hours so this is kind of heading into tonight again it's going to be offshore of North Carolina already by tonight very interesting and then you can see by this is by tomorrow kind of mid-morning it's already offshore of Virginia Beach and those areas of the northern outer banks so here's your wind to be expected in North Carolina. You can see most of the wind actually looks to stay pretty far offshore, which is the good news. So you're not going to feel too much wind from this one. If you are on the beach, though, or the outer banks, I think that you will feel some gusty winds, gusts up to 30 miles per hour. So it's going to be quite breezy, to say the least. It, 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 you will feel it for sure, but I don't expect too much damage from this one, which is the really, really good news, unless it develops further than we're expecting. Now, here's your total rainfall from this model run. Um, and you can see that a lot of areas in the Outer Banks are expecting two to three inches of rain. So you will get some rain from this as well as the cold front combined. You won't be able to really tell the difference from what it's from. But I think that this certainly will lead to some extra precipitation for the Outer Banks since it's sticking out so far into the Atlantic, obviously. I think that you guys will feel the most precipitation from this one. Some bands could affect some other areas. You can see a lot of North Carolina and southeastern Virginia is expecting two to six inches of rain. So, you know, I, I, I find it hard to believe that all of that's from the cold front. So I think that you will get some bands from some of this tropical activity that will lead to more precipitation. Now, we're going to look at one more slide here. And this is just I wanted to mention, just so I don't have to make a separate video on this since it's only a 20% chance right now. This is for that thing that's going to head into the, the little area of invest that's going to head into the Gulf again offshore of Texas. You can see over the next five days, we have a 20% chance of development, and it looks like it's going to head towards either Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, or Florida after that point, whether it's a depression, storm, or hurricane. So uh, obviously, we're going to keep you up to date on the latest information for that storm, as we always do. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this thorough tropical update. I want to do them a lot more like this one in the future, because I think that this is a really good way to get a lot more information out. I used to make these a lot shorter and, and quicker and not put as much information out there, but in this one, I decided to really, really give as much information as I had and especially go ahead and give you guys an update on the effects, which is something that I was kind of lacking on in previous tropical updates. Again, my channel is always a work in progress and I'm not afraid to change things up. So let me know if you like this kind of new style for the tropical updates. I think you probably will since this is a lot more thorough and a lot more information uh, and a lot more information that can be used obviously with the precipitation and the wind forecasts that's going to help people a lot understand what they should be feeling if this is going to affect them. Also, make sure to check out the winter forecast that I just put up. I know a lot of people are usually excited for that and have been asking for that. You might not have gotten the notification yet. YouTube is kind of weird with the notifications if you are um, if you do have the bell icon clicked, you might not have gotten the notification yet. So I just wanted to let you know, I probably showed a card at some point and also it should be at the end screen here at the end of this video. So you will be able to click on that and check that out. Obviously, I'm very excited to be bringing you guys the winter updates again, and I'm going to continue to make those until 
you know, in through sep- November, we're going to be talking about the winter forecast and then we will get to winter, which I'm also very excited for because I cannot wait to be forecasting snowstorms for you guys and doing the winter stuff again. That is my favorite time of year for weather. Uh, right now is also really fun too, cause I'm anticipating winter, but, uh, definitely during the winter is a lot of fun to be forecasting. And this year I want to do a lot more videos than I did last year. So you guys can definitely look forward to to that. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this entire video if you did, because I kind of rambled there at the end. But it's time for me to head out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.